All right, today we are going to talk about our chapter 3.1 vocabulary. Uh, this is all based on metric system and kind of the types of measurements we'll be using and the things that we will be measuring. The first word that we're going to talk about is, well, the metric system. Okay, so the metric system is a system of measurement that is based on the number 10. All right, so when you say based on the number 10, that means as we go up different units, we move the decimal place either left or right. Just like if you multiply something by 10, the decimal place will move to the right, and if you divide by 10, it'll move to the left. Now, <clears throat> our example here are just some common metric units uh, that we might be measuring. So our example is common metric measurements are meters, liters, newtons, and grams. And so we'll talk about all these things and what they represent. Meters is going to be for length, liters is going to be for volume, newtons will be for weight, and grams will be for mass. And those are the kind of the big four things that we're measuring, but we'll talk about a few others as well. If we look over to our picture here on the right, we have a thermometer for temperature, and you know, say this little C, because it's Celsius, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We have a graduated cylinder over here, which is what we use to measure volume. We have a metric ruler, and see these numbers on the bottom, those are actually going to be centimeters, which is what we're going to use there. And here we have a balance, which is how we measure our mass. Mass. Our next word is going to be the SI, International System of Units, or the SI system. Uh, we can basically just abbreviate it SI instead of writing International System of Units every single time. The International System of Units is a system of units used by scientists to measure the properties of matter. So anything that we're measuring, we use the SI system. Uh, which is a common way of reporting. So for example, it's a system of measurement that allows scientists to compare data and communicate their results. It's really important that we report numbers in a common way, in a common language. Uh, and so language kind of being the key word there, you can imagine that if we all reported everything in a little bit different ways, it'd be really hard to tell what we're meaning. Just like if we had a room full of 10 different people and they all spoke a different language, it could be really hard to communicate. And we want to try to make sure that when we complete our studies or anything like that, we have an easier way of communicating our findings and sharing them. So we have a common way of reporting our numbers. One way that we do that is we have different symbol, uh, prefixes and then symbols for those to represent the size of the unit and it's a common way of reporting. So we could have milli, so we could have millimeters, milligrams, right? You may have heard of some of those things or maybe kilometers or kilograms, any of those things allow us to understand, have a common language of how we're reporting our units. So in talking about these units, the first one we're going to talk about is length. All right, so now you probably already have a good idea of what a length is, it's a point or sorry, is the distance from one point to another, right? So we're just, in this case, it would be, just be the idea of going from, you know, point A, and then if we travel, and then we would have point B, right? So we're going to have a distance, right? So this is going to be our distance which is going to equal our length, all right? So that's the idea of what we have there. So for example, in the SI, the basic unit for measurement is the meter, all right? So our uh, basic unit is the meter, that's how we'll and report our measurements, that's the SI unit, and that's gonna be a real important thing that you make sure you know, is that the idea of, for the SI, our unit is the meter, all right? And then we use a metric ruler or meter stick as the common tool to measure that. Up next, we're going to have mass. All right, so mass is the measure of the amount of matter in an object. Okay, so for example, in the SI, the unit of measurement is kilograms, abbreviated KG. One so the big thing here is so we have our <clears throat> SI being kilograms, okay, abbreviated by kg. And also make note, we'll talk about weight later, mass and weight are not the same thing, okay? And then over here we just have this uh, block, this maybe, you know, iron, you know, 
uh, weight over here, and it's going to have that mass. And actually, I shouldn't have even said weight right there because it's, I mean, well, it could be a weight. It also has a mass, and that's what we're emphasizing here, in which this is going to have a mass of 10 kilograms. Up next, we have weight. All right, so now we're going to talk about weight. And weight is the measure of the force of gravity acting on an object. All right, so our example is in the SI, so again, that international system, that common way of reporting, the basic unit of measurement is going to be newtons. Okay, abbreviated by that capital letter N. So the important thing here is weight can change based off location. So for example, my weight on Earth, let's just say it's 560 newtons, and we'll talk about how we are calculating that later. All right, on the moon, it would decrease already to all the way to 90 newtons. If I'm in outer space, if I can just hang it out in the middle of nowhere, <clears throat> I could have a weight of zero. Okay, but in all of these scenarios, my mass would be 56 kilograms. So your mass does not change as long as you stay as a whole thing, as long as you don't, you know, lose an arm or something like that. Your mass is still 56 kilograms. But since gravity changes based on our location, that can change. The reason they're so commonly confused is because the vast majority of us never leave the planet, which means we always experience gravity as a constant thing. It's always there, and so they end up appearing like the same things, but they're two different things. And we'll spend some time uh, looking at how they're different things, but sort of related. They're linked to each other. Next up, we're going to have volume. So volume is the amount of space an object or substance takes up. Okay, so just how much it, space it takes up. It could take up a lot of space or a really small amount of space. Anything that takes up space is going to have a volume. Our example here is in the SI, the basic unit of measurement is the liter. Now, a couple of notes to make here. So one, our SI is liter and we have that. This though, however, a liter is only for a liquid. And we'll spend some more time in our notes and in some labs looking at that. But if it is a solid object, right, so solid objects take up space as well, we have a different way of reporting that measurement. Uh, in that case, if it is a solid, we are going to have meters cubed. All right, so that's one big piece to make sure we remember. So there could be two different SI measurements. In this example, I just have the liquid one stated, which is why in our image, I have this measuring cup of water and we're measuring the volume of that water with that tool. Finally, we have our density. So density can be kind of tricky. So density is the measure of how much mass is contained in a given volume. So the key here is going to be our mass and our volume. Okay, so with mass and volume, we're combining both of these things. So we just talked about them, mass being really the amount of stuff something has, the amount of matter, and volume being the amount of space it takes up. When you combine both of those things, we have density. Density is looking at how tightly packed something is. Is it loosely packed or is it really, really packed? So our example in the SI, the basic unit of measurement is the kilograms per cubic meters. So that's going to be kg per m, and this really should be, if we're going to write it correctly. Um, so in reality, this 3 is going to actually be up on top here. It's going to be cubed. Um, so make sure you write it cubed uh, instead of that written right there in that way. Um, so with this, we just combine that SI for each of the other ones, right? So our SI, we combined the kilograms, okay, and cubic meters. You remember from previous slides, kilograms was the SI for mass, and cubic meters was the SI for a solid object, all right? It would be liters than if we're looking at a liquid. So we just combine the two SIs, and it's going to be mass divided by volume. So if we look at our picture on the right, we have our density. We have one on this side and we have one on this side. Okay, now just take a second and think. Which one do you think would be most dense, right? Which one's more tightly packed? And in that case, you should be saying, well, the one on the right, right? This one clearly has a lot less space. There's a lot more of these green spheres in here taking up space. For these ones, there's fewer, there's not more space for them to move around. 
okay? Or you could think about our uh, everyone in our class, right? So most of our classes, say we have about 30 people in our classroom. If we were to suddenly cut that in half and be 15, you guys would have a lot more room to spread out. It would be less dense. All right, so density is really just how tightly packed something is. That's all we have for this video on our 3.1 uh, introducing the metric system on the types of things and how we're measuring uh, different you know, parts of matter uh, in our world. If you have any questions, please let me know in class. Until then. Thanks for watching.